Hi there, I'm Brian Davis, uh, bringing you another video tutorial. In the last video, we replaced these, uh, what, were, what was there were the fluorescent tube lighting with some smaller, more efficient LED lights, and it's really doing a, a great job of lighting up the basement. And I have one corner that's a little darker that I was wanting to put another light in, and so I wanted to run uh, or add a light to the circuit. Now I had to do a little bit of investigation to see if that was even possible. Um, as it turns out, fairly easy to do. Um, the basic runaround is that uh, I'm not actually adding a light to the circuit because I'm going to take a light away at a different portion of the circuit. Now the, the switch that operates these three lights I have in place, I'm adding a light to the switch but all the lights in the basement are all running off of the same circuit breaker, so I'm not actually adding a light. And because I'm taking away a fluorescent, I'm actually decreasing the amount of power running through the entire circuit. And that's even assuming all the lights were on at the same time, which they rarely are. The lights that I purchased are 26 watt, and so it's a fairly efficient light. The lights that are, I'm replacing are depending on the, the circumstance 36 to 40 watts so there's a decrease in the amount of power running through the circuit with these particular lights. I'll walk you through uh, some basic math to ensure that we're not going to overload the circuit and then I'll walk you through the process of adding the light to the switch that's on this circuit. All right, Basic talk on the circuits within your house. You have a, a breaker a box of breakers down in the basement usually. Um, all the power runs through it and then it's divided amongst the breakers going to different places. The smallest breaker that you would have in most cases would be 15 amps. And so without even looking we know that if we can keep the total power on that circuit well under 15 amps we're going to be fine. You never want to get near maximum power consumption and so within 80% the number that we're looking at is 1440 watts. Now if you have, if you're old enough and you recall purchasing the old incandescent light bulbs, the standard bulbs with the wire filament inside, you'll remember buying them in 80 watts or 100 watts. Uh, and so if we take an easy number like 100, if you had 14 lights of those old 100 watt bulbs on a circuit that's 1400 watts that you had running through the system if all the lights were on at the same time just to give you a frame of reference and that would really max out the circuit now the lights that I just put in the three small LEDs are 26 watts each if I wanted to take out all the fluorescence and max out that circuit down there in the basement, I could put in 55 lights. And I would not max out the circuit. So plenty of space in this situation to put in a new light. Now if you're looking at appliances, it's a little bit different. Uh, appliances can draw more power particularly uh, washing machines or uh, dishwashers, I'm sorry, not washing machines, dishwashers, microwaves, uh, electrical stoves, those require a lot more power. But when we're just talking lighting, it's fairly straightforward. When you're looking at putting outlets around a room or in a, in a house, you have to be a little more careful because the appliances can draw more power, especially this day and age where we are very appliance heavy in our society. So that's the simple, simple answer, and we'll go down now and take a look at how we're going to lay it out in the basement. So here we are in the basement with the newly installed three lights, and you can see I have some of the lights there that I haven't taken away, the old uh, fluorescents. Uh, we have the one LED here, we got the other one over here, and then the third one is over here. Um, but this is my dark corner. Uh, it doesn't look so dark, but it would really be a lot more 
useful if they, this was lit up. As you see, there is a fluorescent over it. That fluorescence on a different switch in a different part of the basin. I'm not quite sure why it ended up over here. So my intention then is to run a wire from this LED over to here while taking out that LED there, the uh, fluorescent that's sitting over the shelves. I mean, it's right over the shelves. It lights up that top shelf and, and everything else is in the shadow of what's on that top shelf. So it does me very little good in the location that it is. I turned off the switch to the LED lights uh, in preparation to be working on the circuit and in getting ready, you know, preparing to drill some holes into the floor joists or on the wire, I noticed over here that we have an existing hole, an existing hole. And so then as I start to look, I realize that there was a wire running over to the panel, um, which is not too far away from the LED that I'm going to run the wire from. So now uh, to make the process a little easier, instead of drilling a whole new set of holes, I'll just run the wire over to this hole and then run them through the holes and I'll be placing the LED about right there. Using the existing holes, we'll run some 14-2 Romex, 14 being the gauge, uh, it's standard lightweight wiring for your home. There are two wires plus your copper ground, so that's where the two comes from. And I'll run it through the holes. I'm going to place the light here. So, running in this direction. And here we are, over to the light. So then here's one of the lights that I put in in the last video. And you'll see that on the wire going in from the house, we have the, the white neutral and the black uh, hot wire, and then of course the copper ground. And this is our new wire that we're going to be uh, connecting to it. And very simple. Connect the black to the black, to the white to the white, and connect the copper to the copper. And we gotta make sure that we also reconnect the light. And although the colors are different, because as I'd mentioned in the previous video, I think it's a European wiring system, we just make sure that we keep them connected in the same way. So where we have the two black wires, and then in this case, the one brown wire from the light tying into the same nut, the two white wires, and then the blue wire, and then the, the grounds all tying in together as well. So I'm getting ready to wire this in place, and one of the wire nuts that I used is one of the smaller orange ones, but because I'm bringing in a uh, thicker wire, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had, uh, it was easy enough to, to put it in place, so I'm swapping it out for one of the larger yellow wire nuts uh, with two pieces of uh, the 14 gauge wire and then the very small uh, household wire, the yellow wire nuts should be fine. And as I wire it into place, I'm going to start um, furthest away and with the ones that are hardest to get to because the wire nuts add bulk and they, they make it diff more difficult to move things around and so it becomes more difficult to wire these in place. So the instinct would sometimes be to start with the easiest one. Uh, but then you're really struggling on the hardest last one, so definitely want to uh, start hard first because it's not going to get easier as you go along. So now we'll put the last one on. Test it. Test all of them, make sure they're snug and tight. Don't want anything coming loose. Uh, 
And there you see. Now, of course, that wire we just put in is not included in the staple there. So we'll put a second staple in so that if anything moves, it won't affect the connection between these wires. Put a staple here. I'll put another staple down there close to the hole. And then uh, we'll go over to the uh, work on the light. Run the wire through. I put another wire nut uh, where it comes out of the hole here. And then I'm going to mount the new LED in this location here. So I have all my tools ready to go. Now it's easier to uh, connect the wires for the light when it's mounted because otherwise the weight of the light, although the light is fairly light, is hanging off of the wire nuts. And so it will provide a little bit of stability if I mount the light first. And then one of the nice things about this light with that channel on the back of it that these clip into is I can even slide it around a little bit if I want to move it to a different location. Now the orange wire nuts should be sufficient uh, with this setup with these smaller wires. Just as I did before, we'll turn on the light to make sure that it works before I staple the wire in place. What a difference that makes. I'm going to loop this a little bit so that there's the least amount of wire hanging around to pull or move anything. As before, I don't want to deform the wire too much, but I do want it to be stable if it were pulled upon. There we go. Uh, the new light in here makes such a difference. It's a lot easier to work when you can see what you're doing. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll have a lot more coming.